Okay, this is just going to be a quick overview of the Uconverge OFX plugin. Um, I'll go through the uh, user interface first. The uh, log section, this is for dealing with um, log footage, it's kind of got an S-curve to it. Um, and there also is options of additive and subtractive saturation. Uh, there's a hue median option, it applies three by three median or five by five. And then there are three uh, specific hue range sections, U1, U2, U3. By default, U1 is enabled, U2 is off, U3 is off, uh, which you can switch on if and when you're using them. Um, by default, it's uh, selected a skin tone region, um, but you can use the color picker to change that or click on the swatch. Um, if you're working on analog footage, it takes in the sampler, the eyedropper sampler samples the actual input source, which is log. So even though you're clicking on the um, what the display image, um, you might return a different one, but if you actually click on here, you can then actually sample the image as you see it in the viewer. Um, and then it's also the hue parameter is the actual hue. Here it's 30 degrees, which means um, it's kind of an RG, obviously skin tone, orangey hue. Red would be zero. Um, green is 120. So this is more red towards orange and so on. Then all the way back. Uh, so you're not seeing any change here because I'm not actually doing it, performing any changes. Um, the hue range is the at 60 degrees uh, or 30 degrees either side it encompasses so and actual hue rotate will then in that within that region that range will rotate now here you see that some parts are being affected because they're actually fall outside that range so if you were to increase the range it would take that in um, if I turn off rotate converge which is the actual the main part of the actual plugin um, yeah converges uh, hues either side of the actual selected one within the range towards that hue so it brings it kind of flattens out the hues towards the skin tone um, if you look at the actual vector scope see the skin tone line yeah, it's been bringing it. I mean, maybe that's slightly off in terms of where the skin tone should be, but anyway. Um, and the minus values is diverge, which pushes them away. You can, there's an option here at the bottom to display a hue chart, which replaces whatever images in the, the, the viewer with a standard hue chart, which you can see. And here you can see what's happening with converge and diverge and rotate towards green. Here, rotate towards magenta. And expand out the range. It's a much wider area. So it can be used to simplify the, the range of colors um, in an image. The color scale is saturation, basically. Uh, or more specifically, it's scaling the C component of YCH, because it's all done in, in YCH color space. So Y, the Luma, C, the saturation, and H, the hue. If I turned it off. Um, the other options here, 
let's reset it. Uh, Luma limiter, sat limiter, blur alpha means that with this particular, these particular operations done to this particular range, you can then fine tune them based on, uh, with creating an alpha based on the luminance or uh, saturation. And then you can apply a Gaussian blur to that Luma. And you can see that Luma or that side of the alpha channel. Click here, you want Luma limiter. And here I'm knocking out the shadows. This is effectively like a luminance mask, kind of standard one. And then the more there and more knocking out shadows, midtones, so it's just would only really affect the highlights would fall off then. And then you do the reverse that you're only affecting the shadows and fall off towards the highlights and fall off, fall off towards midtones and highlights. And you can combine that with a saturation limiter. They are knocked off all the saturation, no saturation. You can use them together or individually. And the blur alpha channel is just applies a Gaussian blur to that alpha just to clean it up so it doesn't you know reduce the um, prospect of any sort of buzziness. Um, and that is the same setup towards U2 and U3, and you'd have to flick the switch to enable them. Um, so you can. We have targeted adjustments in three specific U ranges. The saturation soft clip is it just just applies a soft clip to the, the C channel, the chroma channel saturation. Um, so it just keeps high saturations, pulls them back, and then you have an option to restrict that to an alpha channel based on luminance, and you can blur that. And you can see here, there's an option: saturation soft clip limiter. And here, if I am, um, that's using that as a luminance. So it's handy if you just want to reduce high saturation in, you know, bright parts of the image, which is likely going to be the parts of the image where it would be, um, you return illegal values without having to affect, you say you have a rich saturation in the midtones, you want to keep them because it looks nice. But if you're, but you have some kind of illegal values or high saturation, bright saturation, you want to tone them down but you don't want to affect the other. It's, yeah, you can use this combination. And again, there's the, you can apply um, a Gaussian blur to that alpha channel. Let's set that on again. Um, the Luma mat is, this is using the, um, um, the coefficients of different um, color spaces for the, well, the, that you get your uh, alpha channel and your luminance. Um, Luminance mask from so we have Rex 9, Rex 2020, C3 PI, um, average max, and the ACES ones. Um, sometimes this get better results depending on what you're working in. If you are specifically working in one of these areas, then might as well use, use that option. Um, isolate hue range means if you wanted to see specifically which areas you're actually working in with those the, the different range so this is hue you know hue one you're going to you're just looking at this range see what changes are happening it neutralizes in terms of it takes all color out of any parts that are outside of this range if i this range if i reduce the range it's see this it's there you go it's introducing all that because now those are outside of the range and if i increase the range is bringing in other colors because it's a much wider range that's going to be affected. Um, and the same with, oh, nothing happens when I click on two because I have to enable it first. There you go. Uh, so there's, yeah, an option for those three. Just reset. Um, There are, yeah, so you have your the U1, U2, U3, alpha channel, saturation channels, and then you can look at the individual, the, the U saturation loom or the Y, C, or sorry, the Y, C, H. Um, if I then, if to demonstrate, maybe better, demonstrate the, um, the log controls, I'll switch over to, uh, there's a log C, R, Y, gamut image, uh, if I click on apply function, which is the K1S one, uh, 
Now that just uses the S curve. It doesn't do Alexa Y gamut to Rec 7 and 9 or whatever different um, gamut change. So it's still in the Alexa Y gamut. It's just had this. So that's why it's, even though the tonality seems fine, it seems kind of desaturated. But yeah, it's. So if you wanted to be. To do like technical transform, you would use like a color space transform beforehand to to convert the um, the uh, the gamut to the correct one, and then you're applying your your S curve. But anyway, um, to you there you can control the actual curve in terms of the peak, which is gain, um, obviously contrast, um. The pivot point, midpoint, and so on, and then offset. So you can, if you want, you could, you know, fill your whole waveform, expand the image to maximize your range. If you want to do that, um, this is all demonstrated here. Additive saturation. You will increase saturation purely by. Um, preserving it has to preserve the the lowest value the minimum value and by doing that if you can't change the minimum value you have to just you know increase the other two channels so you can see here it goes up by saturation whereas subtractive it preserves the highest value and if you can't if you want to increase saturation but can't increase change the the value of the highest channel you have to subtract from the other two to create separation and saturation. So if I'm increasing here, you see the on the waveform, it's dropping out. So that has a net effect of increase saturate subtractive saturation will darken the image as you increase saturation. Additive will uh, uh, increase the brightness or lighten up lighten the image as you increase saturation. So if you use them together, you can you know, balance off, you can increase saturation without um, having one extreme or the other. But generally, I, it's actually the subtractive one I like because, you know, a lot of people want to increase saturation without, by having kind of a darkening effect. And that's what this does um, by subtracting from the other two channels. So it's, you know, richer, if you will. The, now to demonstrate the Hue median. I click on this is the U channel and I click on the 3x3 three three median you so it gets really kind of buzziness kind of you know kind of noisy um, uh, irregular rash irregular pixels um, and that's 3x3 three three, and the 5x5 five five is just a oh, so wider radius now that can then, you know, sometimes can have some negative effects because you can have that, you know, changes in color in that certain, even though it's a small region, and it can return, this might be an erratic or unwanted results. But three by three, which is a lot faster in processing, it's kind of like kind of the safe option. Just yeah, um, so it's an option. You don't have to use it, but it kind of cleans up your your hue channel, which is then used for for the for making adjustments in the the rest of the sections um and I think yeah it covers everything so okay doke